Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Simmons with AIM. Welcome back to, well, what's sort of the final week of the 2021 legislative session. We're back with the whole crew today. Our CEO, Matt Greller, Lindsay Moss, Jenna Nepper, and Campbell Ritchie, our legislative team over at the State House. Um, Matt, let's start uh, taking out of the State House just for a minute and do what's kind of become our weekly uh, discussion on the American Rescue Plan and just make sure our members know um, what's going on out there and what we're still waiting on in terms of the American Rescue Plan. Yeah, thanks, Jennifer. Um, bit of a broken record, I suppose, but that's okay. We need to get this information out to, to everybody as soon as we have it. Um, not completely out of the state house, though, because I think the state uh, put a large portion of their distribution into the budget, which you'll hear about here in, in just a little bit. Uh, but a few things to keep in mind. Number one, uh, go to our website and click on the red link in the on the very front home page uh, for the American Rescue Plan uh, link, and you'll find a, a lot of information there already, information that we've sent out, uh, estimated distributions, uh, things of that nature. Um, the, the one thing I guess that you probably need to work on sooner rather than later are the two things. One is take a look at the State Board of Accounts information, make sure that you have adopted the uh, proper ordinance. I know there are a lot of draft ordinances or sample ordinances being floated around on our various listservs. We can certainly send those to you if you need one directly, uh, but I think that's pretty well taken care of and hopefully everybody's completed that step. Another step you need to do uh, or need to undertake is dependent on the size of your community, if you're under 50,000 population, uh, you must have a DUNS number, D-U-N-S number, in order to, a Dun and Bradstreet number, uh, to accept the revenue from the state. So if you're under 50,000, your revenue is going to go to the state first and then be redistributed back out to uh, each of you individually. Uh, and there, again, information on the website about how to obtain a, a DUNS number if you haven't already done so, uh, et cetera. If you're over 50,000 population, a little bit more complicated, uh, but you have to have a DUNS number and you have to be registered and, and have an active SAM registration. Uh, I won't spend the whole uh, time I have allotted to me talking about all those things, but just follow the links on our website. Again, uh, the red button on the, the front homepage. I'm getting lots of questions. We're all getting lots of questions about how you can spend the money. Uh, you know the general four buckets uh, that have been published of where the revenue can be spent, revenue replacement, some infrastructure, et cetera, kinds of things. Uh, I think the message that we've been trying to communicate to all of you is absolutely begin the thinking, the planning process now. Uh, don't overcommit though, because we won't know anything for certain uh, until Treasury issues the final guidance, uh, which we expect soon. Uh, rumors as early as next week, but rest assured, as soon as we have that information, uh, we'll be coming to you immediately on a variety of formats. So stay tuned uh, for that information. Thanks, Jennifer. But, and if I can't remember if you said this, Matt, but it is aimindiana.org. And it is, I know you mentioned being on the homepage, aimindiana.org for more info. And from there, you can link to other national websites like the National League of Cities. They have a lot of information as well. Um, all right, Jenna, let's talk about where we are in the process over at the State House, which is probably going to be the best, the best news of all. Yes, we're almost done. So as we're recording this video, uh, the House is actually wrapping up on the budget, I think voting any minute. Um, they're back in their House chambers and the Senate will be voting on it later today. Um, so in terms of the process, we've already talked about this, but they're going to temporarily recess today as opposed to officially signy die. Um, Speaker Houston announced this morning that they're likely going to be back around, and I quote him, September-ish to deal with redistricting. Um, and then the annual technical corrections um, day, which is usually meant to deal with maybe language that needs reconciled or small fixes um, in code. He announced that will likely be May 10th. This could also be a day where we potentially see um, veto conversations if those do occur, obviously waiting to see more on what the governor decides as um, bills cross his desk. But for now, things are wrapping up and um, really all that's left is, is budget votes. 
All right, so that's a good segue. Uh, Campbell, you've become the, the AIM budget guru. There were some changes to the state budget between our last report and this report. You wanna talk about some of those key changes? Uh, yeah, so there, there were two big uh, changes with respect to what cities and towns are likely to care about. The first and most notable is you heard us talking last week about the ready program uh, that's sort of the heir to regional cities that is in a somewhat expanded form where not only redevelopment authorities will be uh, eligible for it in the senate passed version and the house passed version that was at 150 million dollars statewide in the commerce committee report with their uh, new revenue they bumped that up to 500 million dollars um Though all that money is coming out of the ARP money, uh, just the increased revenue forecast left them shift more money to that. And also, out coming out of the ARP money, they added 60 million for trails. Um, so that's the existing program of the next level trails. Um, and this is on on top of all the other things they've done with that federal money: 250 million in broadband, 160 million in water and, and local uh, transportation infrastructure grants, uh, 10 million in local body camera grants. Those are some of the uh, the main things that are flowing down to cities and towns in the new budget, largely as a result of that, that federal stimulus money is where it's coming out of. Yeah, I can honestly say I, this has probably been the most municipal um, interest in the budget that I've seen. I don't know about you, Matt, but I I haven't seen us have so many things in a state budget that that pertain to municipalities in the past. Well, so many good things, I guess. Right. Well, that's fair. <laughs> uh, unprecedented, I think, in uh, my time working in this business and probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. So yeah. you need to make the most of it. Yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, Lindsay, there is one more bill, I guess, piece of good news. Uh, the eminent domain language that's been floating out there um, all session, uh, gone? It is gone um, officially. There was a bill that passed the House in the second half where the language was added back in. Um, as a reminder, this is the language that um, kind of changed the process for municipalities to exercise eminent domain outside of their corporate boundaries, um, most likely for water and sewer easements, utility projects. Um, it would have required county commissioners to approve that and kind of change the process um, in various other ways. We um, did have to track this down um, really up until the, la the last few days here. Um, it was removed from the Senate bill that passed the House. Um, so this language did pass the House twice, um, which obviously will um, be a conversation we'll have to have over the summer with legislators, particularly on the House side, because there was some support for this proposal over there. Um, but uh, the Senate was the backstop for us, um, and the language wasn't added to any other conference committee report, um, despite um, it popping up in, in a variety of different circumstances. But glad to see that it didn't come back. Um, but definitely need to be having some conversations with legislators over the summer to ensure that it doesn't come back. Hey, Jennifer, just want to jump in there real quick. I would say that was probably the most threatening piece of legislation we had to work on all session and took the most amount of time and attention, I would say, throughout the process. And I just thought the team did an excellent job in making sure it, it went where it needed to go and certainly an issue we'll have to deal with going forward. But uh, Great job for this session. Yeah. Well, as we as we wrap up, I think we should uh, sort of continue something we started at the end of the first half of the legislative session. I asked all of you to describe the first half using one word. So let's describe the entire session in one word. Matt? Put me on the spot first, yep. huh? Um, <laughs> I'll go, uh, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go uh, hashtag uh, Campbell, Lindsay, Jenna. That's my one word. I uh, just thought the, the, the team led by Lindsay did an excellent job. Uh, if you did a quick comparison of where we started with this huge long list of bills that uh, we were concerned about, that list is virtually non-existent now. Um, We've got some very good things passed, uh, some positive proactive items. 
Uh, as you mentioned earlier, Jennifer, the budget is in a spot that uh, we've never seen previously, at least in modern day times and likely will not for a good while longer, uh, which may work against us a little bit in the future, but we'll talk about that in a, another day. Uh, so that's my sort of one word. Well, not very good at following directions. No, but I like it. <laughs> Campbell? I'm going to go with money. Why have we ever seen this much money in a budget, both between the ARP money that flowed through and an unusually good uh, revenue forecast? Uh, this is one of the biggest budgets we've ever seen, uh, showing huge increases in grant programs and flowing to you all, but also in K-12 and in the, the voucher program and in just basically any program you can think of. Most everything got a, got a big uh, bump in this budget because they were very... Uh, fortunate with all of the stimulus and good revenue uh, projections. So money is my word. Lindsay? I think that my word in the first half was weird and I think I'm just gonna stick with it. Um, it was just a weird session. The last couple of weeks um, has looked a little bit more normal. And as Jenna mentioned, the house actually did finish out their session in the actual house chambers. Um, you know, the house had been in the fake house um, all session long over in the government center. And that, it was just really weird um, to not have everyone all in the same building at the same time. And it, it was just weird. Hard to argue with that, Jenna. Yeah, to echo Lindsay, I was thinking unusual from the setup to even, you know, earlier I mentioned the house is working on the budget, they just finished their vote and it passed 96 to two, which is just kind of unusual to see, but to Campbell's point about the money, um, oh, there's a lot that people can support in the budget. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to play along and say turnaround, um, because I think when you look at where we were, in the first half of the legislative session versus where we are now. There's a huge turn of events for municipalities and to echo Matt, this team, uh, you guys were really able to turn it around. And I think, yes, is everything perfect? Absolutely not. Are there things we wish didn't pass? Of course, that's always the case, but compared to what where we could be based on where things were headed in the first half of the session, to me, it's just a, it's a huge turnaround and everybody's to be congratulated for that. Um, so we'll wrap it up there. Um, just a reminder that we have our legislative wrap up webinar, which is a free webinar for AIM members on May 11th. We will also be putting out our annual state house report, which is um, a book for those that are, are new to AIM. It is a book uh, basically uh, that recaps all of the bills uh, or most of the bills that pass this legislative session that have any impact on municipalities. And that will come out uh, towards the end of May, early June. So just watch your email and the AIM website for that. Uh, we'll also be doing legislative recaps at various events like our AIM budget workshops and um, clerk treasure school. There, there are many recaps built into those events as well. So. Uh, it's been great being with you this session. I'm sure we'll be back again um, in the fall as redistricting starts in earnest. But until then, thanks for tuning in every week to our legislative recap. Thanks.